Okay, something about going back to a previous chapter just makes me feel like it's going to be easier. So here we have correlation looking at 4.1. And this was the chapter before I said that we skipped over because I wanted to make sure that we did it when we were looking at a similar subject. So we're going to look at constructing scatter plots for bivariate data. We also are going to compute the correlation coefficient, interpret that correlation coefficient, and understand that the correlation is not the same as causation. So let's get started. Suppose a real estate agent wants you to study the relationships between the size of the house and the selling price. It is reasonable to suspect that the selling price is related to the size of the house. Specifically, we expect that houses with larger sizes are more than likely to have higher selling prices. A good way to visualize a relationship like this is with a scatter plot. And a scatter plot, each individual data contributes to an ordered pair. An ordered pair is plotted on the axis. So here we have, and this is actual data, the size of the house and the selling price, the size of the house and the selling price. So what we're going to do is now plot these and then we're going to see if there is some kind of correlation. So we can um, create a scatter plot using your TI-84. You enter the values into list one and list two. Press second Y equals, then one to access the plot menu. And then when you come down here, you're gonna see this little scatter plot. So you're gonna select this. And you wanna make sure that um, this is still on on. And then press zoom and nine to view the plot. There you go, kinda of nice, okay. So we're gonna observe that larger sizes tend to be associated with larger prices and smaller sizes tend to be associated with smaller prices we would refer this as a positive association. Notice that if we were to kind of estimate a line going through here, it's going up, 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 up. That's another way you can look at it, like a positive slope, have a positive association. So the points tend to be in a cluster around the straight line. We would describe this saying that the relationship between the two variables is linear. So what we want to see is if we do draw this line, can we draw it straight and to where we are kind of looking at the dots being around there. Now here's, here's how one of, the re, one of the ways I tell people to look at it. If you were driving a boat and these were the waves coming out from the boat, would it, would it seem like that you were going in a linear direction? So we can say that this scatter plot exhibits a positive linear association between the selling price and the size. So there are two, two variables are positively associated if the large values of one variable are associated with large values of, the, of another. Two variables would be negatively associated if large values of one variable are associated with small values of another. Now, negatively associated does not mean a bad thing. So negatively just means that if I were to draw a line through here, I would be going down from left to right. Okay, if I draw a line here, I would be going up from left to right. So positively associated like positive slope, negative associated like negative slope. Two variables have a linear relationship if the data tend to cluster around a straight line. So I could see, I could probably draw a straight line through here and a cluster around that line. I could draw a straight line through here and a cluster around that line. We'll talk about outliers in a minute. So let's compute the correlation coefficient. How we measure the strength of the linear coefficient between two variables is called the correlation coefficient. So when you have the two ordered pairs, these are your observed values, then you're gonna have your sample means, x bar and y bar. And the standard deviation, s sub x and or S sub X and S sub Y, and the sample size. So we know how to use all of these things. We found them back in the previous chapters, and we can find the correlation coefficient. So we take one divided by N minus one. We're gonna find the sum of the differences between the values in the mean divided by the standard deviation for each one, for X and for Y. Then we multiply those together. After we multiply them together, then we're gonna to add them together. 
After we add them together, then we're going to divide by n minus 1. And notice that there is not squaring and square roots in this, okay? But we already we do do that for the standard deviation to get that number, but in this we don't. Why? Because negative correlation um, means something here. So we're not trying to get rid of the negative values. So the correlation coefficient is always between negative 1 and 1, between and including negative 1 and 1. So it is greater than or equal to negative 1 and less than or equal to 1. The correlation coefficient does not depend on the units of the variables. It does not matter which variable is x or which is y, so you can flip them and it doesn't matter. The correlation coefficient only measures the strength of the linear relationship. So how strong of a linear relationship is it? How strong are they clustered to that line? The correlation coefficient is sensitive to outliers and can be misleading when outliers are present. That shouldn't surprise us because when we're finding the correlation coefficient, we're using the mean and we're using the standard deviation, which are also sensitive to outliers. So here we use the data following the table to compute the correlation between the size and the selling price. First we're going to compute the sample means and the standard deviations of these. We need all of this to find the correlation coefficient. Alright, so we compute these quantities. Now, an Excel file is great for this, I will tell you. So we're going to take the difference between the value and the mean divided by the standard deviation for x and for y, and then we're going to multiply these two together. After we multiply these two together, we're going to add them together. After we add them all together, we will then divide by n minus 1. And here we get 0 0.9005. Now what does that mean? Well first you want to make sure that this number is between negative 1 and 1, and it is, so that's, that's good. Now here we can also do this using Minitab, using your TI-84, and I like to use the Excel because I just feel like it presents the data nicely. Or maybe because I'm old school, who knows. Okay, so let's interpret this. So if it is positive, the two variables have a positive linear association. So in the one that we just did, it had 0 0.9, it was positive. If it's negative, then it has a negative linear association. In other words, as you go from left to right, the line would be going down. If it is close to zero, then the linear association is weak. Now ours was 0 0.9, so it's not close to zero. If it's closer to one, more strongly positive association, ours was 0 0.9, so it's pretty strong positive association, I would say. If it's closer to negative 1, the strongly negative association. If it's equal to 1, that means every single point is exactly on the straight line. None of the points are even a little bit off the line. So it would be a straight line with a positive slope, so the variables have a perfect positive linear association. If it's negative 1, every single one is on the line with a negative slope, and it has a perfect negative linear association. So, if two variables are not linear related, the correlation does not provide a positive, reliable description of the relationship between the two. So what it's saying is if it's curved when you put it on there and you see this curve going on with the points, then that's something different that we will actually look at after this chapter. All right, let's understand that the correlation is not the same of causation. If you have a group of elementary school children, they take a vocabulary test. It turns out that the children with larger shoe sizes tend to get higher scores on the test than those with smaller shoe sizes. As a result, there was a large positive correlation between vocabulary and shoe size. Does this mean that the new learning words causes one feet, one's feet to grow? Or that growing feet cause one vocabulary to increase? Now that might sound ridiculous, but sometimes when, when we're talking about an issue that we may not have all the data or the confounding variables or have all the knowledge about, we might actually look at it and say, oh yeah, that's what it means. But that's why it's really important to know all of the details. Obviously with this, children with larger shoe sizes are probably older. If they're older, they've probably had more education 
more education means they would probably get a better score on the vocabulary test. So you can't say necessarily that because their shoe size is bigger, then their vocabulary is going to be better. So the fact that shoe size and vocabulary are correlated does not mean that changing one variable will cause the other to change. So correlation is not the same as causation. If we did a correlation, we would get a very strong correlation here, but that doesn't mean that it's that it one causes the other. So you can't conclude that changing the value of one variable will cause another to change. What you can conclude is that they have a strong correlation and you need to look more into it. So what you should know from this is how to construct and interpret that scatter plots, the difference between positive, negative, linear, and nonlinear associations, how to compute and interpret the correlation coefficient, and the difference between correlation and causation, very important. All right, that was all for 4.1. I'll see you next time for 4.2.